Right off the top, we have a school closing to tell you about this morning. Moses Lake School District will be closed due to icy roads and dense fog. We will keep you updated if any more school close or delay here on Up With Creme. Well, thanks for joining us here on Up With Creme on this Friday. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Happy Friday, everyone. <sighs> It's so nice Can't to say, say it enough. <laughs> it just, you say it and it makes you smile. It does every <laughs> single time. Happy Friday. Well, it is quite the foggy Friday this morning as parts of the inland northwest see a very dense fog advisory. That's right. So let's head outside to meteorologist Jeremy Legoo in the Outdoor Weather Center, breaking down what we can see and what we really can't see in terms of fog heading into the weekend. On the fog here on the South Hill, I can still see it off in the distance, but it's not quite as thick as it was earlier, but I don't expect that to remain the case. In fact, fog is very finicky the way it comes and goes and moves around, so I would expect it to come and go and move around. So if you are currently seeing a break in that, just know it could easily come back. We've got dense fog up and over Lookout Pass as you're heading up Snoqualmie Pass, but really butted up against the foothills of the Cascades out in the Columbia Basin as well. So it is really pretty widespread this morning. It's kind of the weather pattern that we're in. We're under a little ridge of high pressure and we've had this melting refreezing cycle each and every day. And so with that combination, we're just keeping all that moisture in the low levels of the atmosphere. And as temperatures fall at night, that fog condenses or that moisture in the atmosphere condenses into a fog. Visibility down below a quarter of a mile and for that reason we have the dense fog advisory and freezing fog advisory in place till about noon but everybody across the inland northwest is below freezing so for all of us it's creating slick roads in some hazardous conditions as you head out the door. Notice Pullman Moscow you're in the mid 30s you're not in that fog and well you're also not under that freeze issue but I would say once you leave either of those towns you will quickly find your way into some slick roads and some fog with the way this weather is moving this morning. Other than the fog not much going on overhead we are going to see that kind of low level atmospheric moisture stick around for much of the day might catch a couple of peaks of sun but not near what we saw yesterday. In fact forecast models keep suggesting that we hang on to cloud cover all day long and I think that's likely the case as temperatures once again climb into the upper 30s later today. Today, a homeless camp located just off of I-90 must move out. Now, Washed Out asked them to leave today by noon. So the camp is located on the north side of the freeway near the Freya exit. And Creme 2's Nicole Hernandez is there this morning as that deadline approaches. Good morning, Nicole. Tell us about what's happening. Good morning, Tim Channing. So first I want to give you a look at my phone right here. You know, Jeremy said it just a minute ago, 31 degrees below freezing here in Spokane and those cold temperatures right there are why protesters are here asking the city for more shelter space. So Wash Dot, who owns this land that the tents are on, says that these protesters in Tent City have been here since mid December. They also say they're getting more concerned with safety at the camp. Spokesperson Brian Coddington says Wash Dot asked for help clearing the camp but the city legally cannot ask campers to pack up. At this point, because of the court decision um, related to shelter beds and availability, there's still much open discussion and debate about the number of beds that need to be in, available in the system to be able to enforce those. Uh, we have not been as a city enforcing those two ordinances, and, and that's going to be the continued practice for this at this point. Now, the city did open a temporary warming center at the Spokane Convention Center for a few weeks, but that is now closed. The city says people there shattered mirrors, put holes in walls, and damaged 90 banquet chairs, some of them used as toilets. In total, they're saying there was $90,000 in damages. Right now, Mayor Nadine Woodward is working with city council members to come up with the solution. One of the council members says the meeting has have been productive and that both sides of the situation know how serious. Yes, it is. Live in Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crum 2 News. Well, Governor Jay Inslee announced the Washington National Guard will be deployed to help hospitals across the state as COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations rise. Some of them will be coming to Spokane to Providence Sacred Heart. So the governor and state health leaders say hospitals are being strained again by high numbers of patients, both COVID and non-COVID. The strain is also due to health employees testing positive for COVID themselves. The National Guard will help in non-medical roles to free up health care providers for emergency care. Hospitalizations increased by 75% in recent weeks, up to 2,000. 
COVID patients make up 18% of all hospitalizations and 22% of patients in the ICU. 80% of those patients are unvaccinated. We do believe we are in for several weeks of very hard slogging in Washington State where all of us have to pitch in together because we don't know where that peak will be. It's likely to be later than many places because this hit us later than many places in the United States. The governor also announced a four week pause for non emergency procedures in hospitals. However, doctors can order a procedure if they think delaying it will lead to severe health complications in that patient. Inslee says this is to ensure emergency care is still available for everyone. Not just for Omicron patients, but for heart attack victims, for car crash victims, for gunshot victims, they all need help right now. And uh, this is a difficult, but it is a necessary decision to make sure people get access that is life saving right now. Providence released a statement after Governor Inslee's announcement. They say the National Guard will offer relief to their overworked caregivers. They hope the National Guard's presence will highlight the importance of getting vaccinated and taking other actions to prevent spreading COVID. Idaho Governor Brad Little took similar actions back in September when Idaho hospitals entered crisis standards of care due to a spike in hospitalizations and COVID cases. The Washington Department of Health Deputy Secretary says those who are unvaccinated are 8 to 11 times more likely to suffer severe illness from COVID-19. Now, as we see these rising hospitalizations, let's send things over to Tim Pham to see how hospitals across the state and all over the inland northwest are now coping. Yeah, so Governor Inslee's announcement comes as hospitals say they are worse off now compared to the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. The Washington Hospital Association says we're not at crisis standards of care yet, but they are at crisis levels of staffing. In eastern Washington, the Hospital Association anticipates spikes in COVID cases. Another issue is patients who don't need to be in hospitals, but rather in long-term care facilities. Newport Hospital and Health Services says this is something they struggle with, especially as a rural facility. Rural community, many of our community members are, you know, um, under the poverty limits. They don't have the money to uh, private pay into some of these skilled nursing facilities or rehabilitation care. The Washington State Hospital Association is requesting people to avoid going to the emergency room if they need a COVID test or aren't very sick. They also recommend wearing a medical grade face mask instead of a cloth mask. Now we do know that this was a lot of information and that things are changing every day now. So for the very latest, just text the word COVID to the number 509-448-2000. We'll send a link right to your phone. 608 now time for your morning rush more news in less time after three hours of deliberation a jury found one of the suspects in the murder of Jason Fox guilty Jason Fox was the Newport teen killed and buried in a shallow grave more than a year ago in the trial yesterday the jury found Claude Merritt guilty on multiple charges including first degree murder Claude will return to court for his sentencing on February 18th. Well, something that sounded like an explosion was set off near the Inland Northwest Lighthouse for the Blind yesterday. According to Spokane Police, someone threw something out of a car and they believe it was a large firework. So there's a hole in the snow that you'll be able to see here in just a second that shows the extent of the damage. That's it right there. No property damage or injuries were reported. After weeks of delays and cancellations, things are finally starting to return to normal at SeaTac Airport in Seattle. Alaska Airlines released an apology online. The airline canceled more than 15% of its flights over the holidays due to weather and staffing shortages. This was the most difficult holiday travel season we've ever experienced at Alaska. Although we both increased staff and prepared extra equipment to de-ice and keep the snow cleared, we ultimately did not perform. Other airlines are facing similar problems with some offering incentives for employees without COVID to pick up extra shifts. All right, get your appetites ready mm. because tomorrow the fifth annual Mac and Cheese Festival is happening in downtown Coeur d'Alene. Local chefs present their best Mac and Cheese combinations and compete for the Golden Noodle Award. Now, unfortunately, it is sold out this year, so if you didn't already grab your ticket, sorry, you'll just have to wait until next year to enjoy that cheesy goodness. That's a look at your morning rush.
And the one thing you need to know about weather is the fog. We're waking up to a patchy, dense fog across much of the inland northwest. In some areas, visibility is down below a quarter of a mile. Temperatures below freezing means that it's slick roads and foggy sky. Foggy conditions? Fog. Yeah, fog as you head out the door. <laughs> All right, time for your wake up call. Today is known as Quitters Day, the day most resolutions start to fall off. But hey, we are not about that. We're not about quitting, right? We're all about encouraging each other. So we are champions and we want to know how is your resolutions going? Text us 509-448-2000 or use the hashtag up with Creme on social media. We'll be each other's accountability buddies. I love that. Accountability buddies. That's right. Okay. What does it say here? Let's see. But first, let's take a live look outside this morning. We want to say good morning to you, Inland Northwest. And hey, say it with us this morning. It's, it's Friday. Friday. Woohoo! Friday. Yes. You're awesome, man. man, come on, Jeremy, get it together this morning. Let us know where you're watching from. Go ahead, grab a cup of coffee, maybe a cup of tea, and join us for more Up With Crim.